Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is do a clean install of Fedora 43. Uh, currently, Fedora 43 is not released. It should be out sometime next month. Um, currently, it's still in the beta testing. If you've been following the series along, uh, we have already shown how to upgrade from 42 to 43. In this video, we're going to do a clean installation, show you where to get the ISO from, and uh, we will go from there. So what we're going to do is I just opened up Firefox, went to Google, and searched download Fedora 43. All right, so from there we can actually start from the project's homepage right here. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, it says Fedora 43 Beta has been released. That's because, again, it's due out in just about a month or so. So we're going to go to this website here, which is going to give you the announcement for the beta. We're going to scroll down and we're going to choose our flavor, which ones do we want to use, okay? Fedora Workstation is the GNOME desktop, so if you want uh, Fedora GNOME, that's the one you're going to pick. Uh, I always do KDE Plasma. A uh, little a weird little backstory on this. I also, I also do Apple products. I have a Mac Mini. I have an iPhone. I have an iPad. So I'm familiar with the way Mac is laid out as well. And in my opinion, you know, your your opinion might differ, but in my opinion, GNOME is closer to uh, Mac's UI than it is to Windows. But for some reason or another, I just really can't get into GNOME. It's, it's weird. It really is. So I don't know that much about it, but if you are into GNOME, click the workstation we're going to click the Plasma desktop here, and it's going to take you over here to the download page. The only one that we're really worried about, because this fits 99% of the people, is this very first one here. It says Intel and AMD x64, x86 underscore 64 systems. And we're just going to click this little download button here. I've already downloaded it, uh, but that's how you get it. And so from there, we're going to go ahead and close this window. Once you download it, you can pause this video or you can watch it a, a couple times so you get it practice in a virtual machine if you need to. But what we're going to do from there is we're going to go ahead and click on our start button. We're, again, we have Fedora 43 now. We upgraded from Fedora 42, but we're going to do a clean install. So we're going to click on the button there, and what we are looking for is we are, I can't remember which menu it's under, system, there it is. So we're going to go to system and then Fedora Media Writer. And it's going to open up this item here. You can use this anytime you want. This is one of the things I really like about Fedora. If you need to get a different version or you need to just create an ISO, you can do it straight from here. Um, I will do another video on this particular uh, tool here in a little bit. For now, we're going to go ahead and select the center one. We're going to select an ISO file because we've already downloaded it. I'm going to click Next. And, of course, it's already going to show us the USB that's plugged in. And we're going to just go ahead and select our downloads, and we're going to choose the Fedora 43 that we downloaded. Click Open, and then Write. It's going to give us a confirmation and tell us it's about to wipe out that thumb drive, which is fine. That's the purpose of what we're doing. So we'll go ahead and click Write, and it's going to want your password. And then it's going to start writing. While it's doing that, I'm going to pause the video. Okay, now that that part is done, we're going to go ahead and click Finish on here. And uh, it should be noted that this um, this application comes with Fedora. You don't have to install it. It comes with default. Um, that way you don't have to worry about, you know, Belina Etcher or trying to download any other USB media creator. It, it already has one built in. Um, and you can just go with it. Like I said, I'm going to do a video on this, just this uh, tool alone here in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and close this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot, and we're going to, when I reboot, we're going to start the installation process, a clean installation process, Fedora 43. I'm going to not, I'm not going to skip any steps as I go through this, but I will be pausing often. That way, we don't end up with a 45-minute long video where 30 minutes of it you're staring at a progress bar. So let me go ahead and get this thing, this reboot started, just like that. And now I'm going to pause the video, and we will be back in just a second. Okay, so the only thing I did here um, while you were gone is once the Dell logo popped back up, and this only applies to Dell, if you have a different computer, you have to, to do some Googling and figure out how to get into your, your boot menu. Uh, you're either looking for the setup menu or you're looking for your one-time boot menu. Usually, especially here on a Dell, it's an F12 or a Delete. Um, most motherboards are basically the same. It might be F8 or F10 or whatever. As soon as the flash screen shows up, hit F12. That's the basic concept, and that's how I got to here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to choose my USB drive. That's what I'm going to boot off of and hit Enter. It's going to go ahead and 
and load up. We can test the media, which uh, is not a bad idea. I'm going to skip it for the for this um, tutorial. But if you click test media, what it's going to do is it's going to test the integrity of the USB drive to make sure that it's actually uh, complete and not corrupted. Uh, might save you a little bit of time later, but it is a process. So we're just going to go ahead and skip it. I'm going to go straight to, to install Fedora KDE Desktop Live. By the way, if you like these videos, uh, you'd like to see more, uh, make sure you click like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. That way you know when the next video is coming out. So this can take a second. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video um, or not. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes. This is usually why I hit pause because sometimes it takes a while. This, this PC is not the fastest computer on the shelf. Uh, yeah, we're going to pause. Okay, so after boot up, we landed on the desktop. Uh, that actually took probably another 30 or 45 seconds after I paused. So that's all you're missing is just that 30 or 45 seconds. You're not missing any steps. Just like our clean install Fedora 42 in the first video of the series, uh, you end up with the same kind of screen here. You, all you got to do is click this install to hard drive button in the center. Before I do that, there is a caveat, just like with the last time. This is to show a clean install to overwrite everything that's on the disk. This has absolutely nothing to do with dual booting. If you want to learn about dual booting, I have a couple other videos that are already done. You're more than welcome to go watch those two, three, four, five times if you need to. So for clean install, we're just going to go ahead and click the install button. And we let uh, the new installer, this is actually going to be one of the things that is different between Fedora 42 and older and new Fedora 43. This installer was introduced in uh, Fedora 42, but only on the GNOME, or GNOME, however you want to uh, uh, pronounce it, but it was only available in the workstation. This is the new installer. This will help remove a lot of the confusion and angst that Anaconda has been famous for for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. So this is more of a web kind of base this is more of a linear kind of thing you make your options and you click next it's not like you have to guess what it wants you to do so uh u.s english obviously so we're going to go ahead and click next in here it, i'm going to go ahead and leave everything as default to be honest with you i'm probably just click next 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 but what this is doing is it's asking pretty much the exact same information that the other installer does it just does it in a more linear fashion it asks the questions instead of you guessing which question you want to ask answer next so this has to do with NTP servers we just leave it alone if you leave the check mark in there it'll resolve that problem by itself this is your time zone it's going to automatically set it uh, or you can take a check mark out and you can set it yourself we'll click next our destination is going to be our 250 uh, 6 gig micron that we have in there it's the only drive available and we're going to we can reinstall Fedora we can share with other operating systems with I have in my dual boot video how to do that. Use the entire disk or mount point assignment. Mount point assignment is the same thing as using manual. So you can go through and you can manually set everything. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the entire disk. That way Fedora is just going to forget there's an operating system installed. It's just going to wipe everything clean and start all over from fresh. So next. Whether you want to encrypt your data or not, this is full disk encryption. It will have require you to uh, set a password. Because it's going to encrypt the entire disk, um, if that's the type of person you are, especially if you're going to install this on a laptop, that's a good idea. That way, if your laptop gets lost or stolen, people can't just take your hard drive out, attach it to their computer, and get a hold of all your pictures. So uh, this is just the desktop and for demonstration, so we'll leave that out. On here, we can go ahead and create our user. and our password passwords match and we want to click next all right so this is just a review it's just a summary of what it's going to do it's going to delete these three partitions it's going to create these four partitions and redo everything you're going to put a check mark in this box down here. It says that you understand that you're about ready to erase everything and you've already done your backups like you were supposed to do. And so you're not going to lose any data. So we're going to click erase and install. And we're just going to let it go. That's all it takes. It's a lot easier than, than the hub and spoke 
kind of anaconda that we're used to in the past. This is more linear. This, this will make uh, Fedora as a type one distribution a lot easier to use. So while this is running, I'm gonna go ahead and pause. Okay, now that those four tasks are done, it says it's successfully done. You can exit to the live desktop or you can scan that QR code to send feedback. That's all it is to install. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and uh, freak out because the screen blanked. <laughs> that was weird. There it goes. All right, so we're just gonna skip this. We're gonna minimize that. It just went blank for some really weird reason. That's because it's beta, it isn't out yet. So we're gonna go ahead and close it. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it crashing or anything like that because it did so after the installation was successful. So what we're going to do here now is we're just going to go ahead and reboot like we normally do. Uh, restart. There we go. Restart. And I'm just going to go ahead and let it restart and get back to the desktop. <clears throat> While it's doing that, I'd like to say that um, release cycles are pretty... Um, uh, regular. It's every six months. Um, October um, for Fedora, October is the month for odd numbered releases such as 39, 41, 43, 45. You get the idea. April is when the even numbers are released 40, 42, 44, and so on. But they are released in numerical order. So they're released for Fedora 41, 42, 43. So they are in numerical order just every six months and they just happen to fall in April and October. And if, as a new user, you're not confused enough, Ubuntu and Fedora both release their new versions at the same time, <laughs> April and October. All right, so we're back onto the desktop. We're going to go ahead and log back in. If I'm not mistaken, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Also, don't shoot me if I'm wrong. Um, the last October release was October 15th, so you should expect it about around the middle of the month. Again, that's... That's just from memory. I didn't Google it. All right, so we're back on here. We have our welcome screen. Go ahead and close that. And as always, the very first thing we do before we do anything else is we run sudo dnf upgrade to ensure that we do, in fact, have the latest version. Oh, look, there's updates available. How surprising. All right, so 21 new packages, 492 are being upgraded, replacing 493. You will end up with 442 megabytes of extra stuff. So we will go ahead and let that run. Um, and then when this is done, we will reboot again, just in case there's something in there that requires a reboot. I haven't seen anything just yet, but oh yeah, there you go, Plasma. Plasma is being updated, so we're gonna reboot uh, after that. And then what I'm going to do is the, to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop the video here because the path is predictable. When this is done, we're going to reboot. We're going to land back on the desktop. So if you like these videos, like to see more, make sure you click like. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Subscribe. Click the notification bell. And we will see you next time.